Energy, so the dictionary says, can mean strength or force or power. Without energy, in all its forms, our world would be brought to a standstill. Today, more than ever, this possibility has been brought closer to likelihood. But there are steps we can take, all of us, to prevent that likelihood becoming a probability. A large British motor engine plant. Here, determination has been put into practice, on the factory floor and in the way they run their transport fleet. Discussion and involvement of personnel has led to firm commitments to conserve. Every driver can learn from the routines that have been introduced. Check tire pressures daily. Make sure that oil, air and fuel filters are clean. Binding brakes, waste fuel and linings wear out faster. The same goes for the forklift trucks which load the vehicles. But when a loaded vehicle leaves the works, how many times will it come back empty? Wasteful again. Schedule journeys as does this factory, so that a vehicle is always fully loaded when it's on the road. And on the road, drivers too have to play their part. That's why seasoned men are put through continuing refresher courses. He may not need an L plate, but there's still plenty to remind him of. Gentle acceleration, sensible use of the gearbox, a light foot on the throttle pedal, an equally light foot on the brakes, using anticipation instead of violence. These techniques, good driving techniques, can save up to 10% of fuel consumption. So the private driver can learn from the pros. Check those tire pressures. Anticipate when traffic lights are likely to change. Resist the temptation to indulge in a racing start just to get away in front of the other fellow. Rubber on the road, another form of waste, and less fuel in the tank. Gently does it, and just as rapidly. You may ferry the kids to and from school. How about making up a carpool with neighbours? On short trips, one car can be made to do the work of three. And on those really short trips, why use the car at all? They're bad for your motor, they're gluttons on petrol. A bike will get you to the post box just as fast, won't cost anything, and you may even benefit from the exercise. Here's an example of a brewery which has gone back to horses. For deliveries, not for the beer. They figure that two horsepower on five mile runs saves them money. A truck costs 5,000 pounds, lasts for five years, and costs 1,200 pounds a year to run. Two horses cost 1,000 pounds and last for 15 years at a lower annual cost. Back though to big business. This is the home of the parent group of five major companies. And here's where lots of their work people live. They've set up a formally constituted energy committee. They don't just talk, they act. 
To start with, official fuel watchers have been appointed throughout the group. A secretary has taken on the job of checking light and heat wastage at lunch times. A small additional chore, but one that's worthwhile. Why leave open any opportunity of wasting energy when it's not being needed? In one of the laundries, another fuel watcher is a responsible man. Every now and then, he checks on steam consumption. If they're using too much, he wants to know why. It's only too easy for heat, and that means energy, to escape. Checking for leaks of steam is one of the easiest visual methods of ensuring that it doesn't happen. All pipes carrying heat must be lagged, and that goes for storage tanks too. The same goes for any machinery which uses transmitted heat in order to function. Lagging of pipes and tanks is essential to an efficient industrial process. It's equally essential to you and I in the home and we can carry it out far more easily and cheaply. A few rolls of insulation in the loft, a jacket round the hot water tank, and watch those fuel bills come down. Keeping out drafts is cheap and another big fuel saver. There's a great deal the ordinary householder can do to help himself and save his pocket. Out of the mouths and paintbrushes of babes and sucklings can come a fresh impetus towards energy saving in the world we live in. Professor Ian Fells of Newcastle University regularly visits schools to involve children in their own future. Hello boys and girls. You've been thinking about saving energy during the course of the summer. And behind us we have several of your ideas uh, in drawings and so on. Now what we want to do now is to find out from you just what these bright ideas are. Now, you, the girl in the blue pullover, over there. What's your idea? Instead of some heat on, wear woolies. That's right, wear woolly jumpers. And uh, we shall need them, I think, during the coming winter. Put on hats. Instead of using the hair dryer, I'll use the wind or the sun to dry your hair. Let the sun dry your hair. Yes, well, that, that, that's not a bad idea. How many of you boys use hair dryers, as well as girls? Oh, <laughs> I see. Oh, well, well. Don't use the car walk to the shops instead. Well, yes, you, of course, you couldn't walk too far, I don't think. Now, how many of you come to school in a car? And how many of you walk to school? Oh, anybody come on bikes? Nobody come on bikes. It is perhaps a bit busy just for coming on bicycles. Let's, let's see whether we can get any more, uh, any more new ideas. We've had switching off lights, and wearing thicker woolies and pullovers and things. Don't use dishwashers, just wash up in the sink. What's your idea? Don't turn the gas too high, so the flames are looking at the side of your pan. Good. Now, that's marvellous, children. But what I'd like you to remember is this. You're all thinking about saving energy, and I think some of your ideas are very good. Now, unless we manage to save energy, with the suggestions that you've made, when you grow up, and have kids this size, and I know that seems a strange idea to you at the moment, but unless we manage to save it, there won't be as much energy for them as there has been for you up to now. On the encouragement of conservation, we can never start too early. Mm -hmm.